Good morning, everyone. Uh, again, thank you all for coming, whether it's from the north, the south, the east, or the west. We're really happy to have you guys here. And as Jill said, I'm just going to take this opportunity to tell you all a little bit about what brought me here and what my experience has been like. So I'm originally from North Carolina. I went to school in Maine, high school in Maine, and then I went to the University of Virginia for college. But I've spent the last nine years since college living in Tanzania in East Africa. I originally went over there uh, working nonprofit. Uh, my first year with orphan and vulnerable children, my second year teaching agriculture at a secondary school. And my last seven years, I've actually been in the agriculture business for two years as a product manager for a large family farm. And then the last five years, I've been a general manager for two coffee estates in the northern region of Tanzania near Arusha. And one of these coffee estates is, is a large coffee estate, 3,000 acres, and it's right on the edge of Arusha City, which is one of the largest growing cities in Tanzania. And the government came and they put it under an urban planning zone. So it was going to go from running a farm to running a real estate business to nothing. And my wife and I looked at each other. I'm also married, did I mention that? Um, we also have two children who were born over there, two little girls. And my wife and I looked at each other and we said, okay, short term, we're happy. I've got a great job. Um, we've got a great community here. But we can't make long-term decisions based on short-term circumstances. So we talked a lot. We thought a lot about it. And we figured if we can make an MBA work, that would be a great way for us to transition back to the States, for me to look at some different uh, career opportunities. And so I started looking at schools that interested me. And then I took those schools to my wife and said, OK, now you get input. Uh, where ge geographically would you like to live? And so we narrowed it down together to about five schools. And I applied to those five schools. But as I kept on reading about the schools, as I kept on uh, talking to alumni or current students, I just felt that the current of, of, of Owen just was consistent. Everything that I read about was the same thing that I heard about from the students and from alumni and from admissions. So it just didn't feel like so much words. It felt like this was a real thing that they were talking about that was really happening. And as I, um, it came to decisions, I actually got into another school, and there was a little bit of a time crunch there. And I really wanted to come to Owen. My wife really wanted to be in Nashville. And so I called up Owen, and I said, hey, I, I've got the situation, and we're so close to admissions date. Is there any way you can give me news? And luckily enough, they said, we have good news for you. So. All this was happening, uh, I was feeling good about that, but at the same time, I was also continuing to manage these coffee farms. And I thought I was doing a really great job. Um, agriculture is a really tough business to turn a profit in. We were turning profit two of three years. Uh, our yield was increasing. And so I really felt like I'm leaving a little pat on the back, good job. And instead, I faced a string of disappointments. At first, it was driver, tractor drivers uh, siphoning diesel from the tractors. Not a big deal, but a little bit of loss, but disappointing. Then it was someone taking money from our roasted coffee sales. Again, not too much money, but still disappointing. And then my cashier stole $20,000 out of the safe to pay back a loan shark. And then my two top field managers got caught trying to steal massive amounts of green coffee as we were transporting it from our farm to the mill. So I went from feeling like, hey, man, I've really done a great job managing this farm to feeling like I've, I've failed. There's somehow there's been an undercurrent of things that I haven't noticed, that I haven't been aware of, that I haven't been able to control. And now I have no chance to redeem myself to even see if it's possible to make a change and to improve things. So that's how I left my work, just feeling really down on myself that I hadn't done as good of a job as I thought. So I came to Nashville moved in, and started Mod 1 in August. And you will hear a theme if you decide to come here that Mod 1 is difficult. Uh, it is difficult, but why is it difficult? It's because we're coming back to school. We're getting back in the groove of what it means to study and be a student and go to class, and what it means to be in groups and learn the different dynamics there. You get to go back to kindergarten and wonder who you're going to sit next to at the lunch table. Um, and then, as well, you're, you're facing career decisions. And for me, I also have a family that we're trying to find a preschool for the kids and you know, figure if my wife's, can, if she can find work somewhere. So just a lot going on. Um, and so I started down this operations path. And I thought, that seems most similar to my experience as a farmer. 
I'm gonna check this out. So I started going to the info sessions of those companies, but I had always kind of had this idea of a few different of my own company ideas that I wanted to work on. And Owen offers something called a fire starter, where, which is local investors come in, and you can come in as a student, and you can present your idea as rough as it possibly is. And you just kind of dump it out there, and they give you feedback. And it wasn't that I had some you know, golden ticket company that was going to solve the world's problems, but I had a lot of positive feedback, nonetheless, about being in that industry and maybe wanting to pursue a, a new way of doing business in that industry. And it got me excited about maybe moving away from the operations path and moving on to a more entrepreneurial yeah. path. So being married and being happily married, you have to communicate. And so I went back home and I sat with my wife. We talked about it and we said, because now it's going to be, if I'm going to really commit to this, it's no longer school, two years, no income. It's who knows how long, uh, no income. She got really excited about it for me and for her and said, you know, she gave me her blessing. So I came back to Mod 2 and I started focusing on this new path and I'm calling people in Tanzania and Brazil and Colombia and Guatemala trying to talk to farmers about their experience and trying to narrow this kind of broad company concept down to a more focused company concept. And then I moved into Mod 3 where there's a great class called Launching the Venture. And Launching the Venture is hosted by a very successful local entrepreneur. And it's just about starting a business. What questions need to be answered? Um, what are investors looking for in a business? And it was a great class. I learned a ton. At the same time, I was applying for a grant uh, for the summer that's also uh, given by the school. So instead of taking the more traditional path of going and getting an internship at a company, the school can offer uh, three, three positions or three grants to students who are pursuing their own company. So I applied for this grant. I got the grant. I got to the end of Mod 3, and I did my final presentation for uh, the class, and I scored the highest in the class. So I got all these great things happening. But on the inside, I was not so happy. I was really stressed. I was really wondering, you got two kids. Now I've got a third on the way due in August. What am I doing? I need to go get a job. I need to get an income. I need to provide for my family. Um, is my idea any good? If it is any good, am I the right person for it? To the point where it was even affecting my home life. So I come home and try to be present with my wife and my kids, and, and I just couldn't, I couldn't be present. To the point where my wife is saying, hey, you know, you can go down this path, but it can't be like this. And so when she kind of snapped her fingers, it also opened my eyes to what else was happening around me here at school. And that was having a teaching assistant in that class, a second year student who was extremely positive with me about getting the work done and willing to meet with me. It was um, my leadership and development coach in the LDP program here who I got to meet with three or four times throughout the process, giving me real <clears throat> tangible ways to kind of pull my mind out of this, going down this negative path and think about uh, more sustainable solutions. And it was even friends, uh, Owen friends, kind of rolling their eyes a little bit at me, just saying, you got this, man. Uh, and I just felt like the theme that I was getting from everyone in my life here at Owen was to stay positive. And I'm not talking about stay positive like rainbows and unicorns. I'm talking about stay positive. If you're going to hit a wall, you don't hit a wall and fall down. You hit a wall and you figure out, can I dig under it? Can I go around it? Can I get over it? Can I rent a helicopter and fly over 16 walls at once? Um, and that's just, that was the message that I got from everyone here. And uh, it just, to me, positivity is the sustainable choice. I'm in an innovation strategy class right now that's all about remaining this kind of positive in the workplace. Um, if I'm going to be an entrepreneur and start my own business, I've got to remain positive when people are you know, knocking my idea, saying that this isn't going to work. Um, in my marriage, I have to remain positive. As a father, I have to remain positive. And so for those of you who have already decided to come here to Owen, I hope that you can rest easy knowing that you're coming to a community that will believe in you. And any place that you're willing to take the initiative and go out and serve yourself, you will find others who are willing to serve you. And for those of you who are still considering, I would just highly, highly recommend this, uh, this school uh, to recommend Owen. And everything you read about it being a very personal place with a very personal touch, if you're willing to extend your tentacles into what is Owen, you will find a very welcoming and supportive place. So with that, thank you for your time, and welcome. <laughs>